Good afternoon to you, Mark's out of HurricaneTrack.com. Let's talk about Hurricane Nate, which is getting ready to make landfall within the next few hours along the northern Gulf Coast of the United States, southeast Louisiana, all of coastal Mississippi, coastal Alabama there, and the western part of the Florida Panhandle, all going to be under the gun from this uh, over the next several hours. And then it's going to be an inland problem, and I want to talk about that. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on that because people need to understand the impact. Okay, this is a big event for television. It's a big event for social media. A lot of people follow this stuff, and they're interested in it. Some people are frightened of it. Some people hate it with everything they've got, and some people are very fascinated. All of that together, we have to remember, we need to understand what we are up against here and the big picture. It's not just a coastal event. So let's look at the latest as of the 1 p.m. Central Intermediate Advisory from the National Hurricane Center winds 90 miles per hour. And remember, that's not everywhere. You know, the Hurricane Hunter plane found that in one location. That location may wax or wane, the thunderstorm or the convection that it, the Hurricane Hunter flew through. But that is the maximum, the highest winds they were able to find, and that's out over the open water. The central pressure, 982 millibars, and of course, Nate is moving very quickly to the north-northwest at 25 miles per hour. The next five days of Nate's life and how it will impact our lives here in the uh, deep south and the Gulf Coast. Uh, obviously, the watches and warnings down here, we don't need to go over this anymore. By now, you should know there's a hurricane coming and all of the nasty effects that are associated with that scenario. But once this moves inland, areas of extreme southeast Mississippi, southwest Alabama, and then extending northeast from there through Montgomery, Birmingham, and all the cities in between. You think about I-65 and I-20 that cuts through uh, even eastern Mississippi to some extent. But this is a eastern weighted storm, asymmetrical, not because it's being pushed by wind shear, but just because it's moving so darn fast. The translational forward speed of it's very fast so a lot of the worst weather is going to be on this side and even away from this cone of uncertainty here it's not necessarily going to be that the effects are only going to happen inside of here they could extend farther out than that so please keep that in mind over the next several days as this moves across the deep south through Tennessee end of West Virginia and eventually out here over the extreme northwest Atlantic all kinds of nasty weather is going to take place along here and it's very important for you to use trusted sources, your local favorite trusted television meteorologist, uh, social media that they post on there with Facebook Live, etc. Latch on to that. Use weather.gov, which I'll show you in a minute, weather.gov, and just inform yourself. This is going to be a fast-moving, fairly high-impact system with the potential to knocking down a lot of trees through here, power outages, flooding rain, and just general nasty conditions, and a lot of that is going to happen in the overnight hours tonight, especially closer, obviously, to the coast, but the fast-forward motion here means that this is going to get fairly deep inland uh, during the night. Now, a bit of good news, perhaps. Whoops. Uh, Nate is moving over and out of the warm waters of the loop current here. Uh, water temperatures throughout the rest of its journey uh, in the 80s, still warm enough to support it, uh, not until you get right up against the coast do you start to lose some of that very warm water in the shelf water area. But Nate is expected to be a solid hurricane upon landfall with a good deal of the energy, again, focused over here on the eastern side of it instead of so much on the western side. But that being said, as I'll show you on radar in a minute, areas like New Orleans over here are going to get a strong northwest flow off of Lake Pontchartrain. You think about Kenner over here. Uh, and other areas along the lakefront there, Metairie, heavy rain bands coming through, but not the solid, you know, horrible impact that this would have if it were coming in at a west-northwest angle like that, as an example. We're not seeing that. So there is some good news here. Looking at the satellite animation, it's nice that the air conditioning shut off for me. <laughs> the satellite animation, maybe the eye trying to form and pop out through here, um, it's not the best organized system, the most defined, meteorologically speaking, but it has definitely wrapped itself up. It has developed an inner core, 
And if it weren't for that 25 mile per hour forward motion, we would be really, really worried about this ramping up to a strong and potentially devastating hurricane. So remember, a lot of the worst of the effects are going to be over here on this eastern side for the most part. And so you're going to have onshore flow, very heavy rainfall, and the winds are going to pick up very quickly. And then all of that nastiness is going to move right up through here in southeast Mississippi, southwest Alabama, and the western Florida panhandle after dark tonight. Yuck. Uh, just look at this, the patchwork here on the National Weather Service site of all the different watches and warnings that are in effect, extending well away from the coast. And this is what I want to emphasize, the flood risk in the mountains, the southern Appalachians. The hurricane warning at the coast, obviously, but then inland, tropical storm warnings for areas that are inland, that's possible. Lots and lots of trees are going to come down with this, so be ready for the power outages, folks. It's coming. Your Sunday may not be very pleasant up the I-65 corridor towards Montgomery, Atmore, areas like that, not very good at all. Uh, hard to pinpoint exactly what's going to happen, but it's up to you to be weather aware. If you've got a smartphone, iPhone, Android device, you know, I use Radar Scope. I have no affiliation with them. I don't get paid by mentioning them. It's called Radar Scope. It's about 10 bucks, and it is worth every penny because you can see yourself on that radar. I know a lot of radar does that. But I recommend Radar Scope, and that helps you be engaged to know what the weather is doing. You see your position on there and the weather coming towards you. I think it helps to be weather aware in that situation. Strong onshore flow continuing over here with the flooding along the coast of Florida and even over here into Texas. Just a wild late summer pattern instead of what we're used to seeing here in the early days of fall. This is what I was talking about, and I want to change my color to brown here. Very strong bands of rain coming across parts of southeast Louisiana. The eye of Nate sitting down here. Very heavy banding coming on shore, uh, eventually into Mississippi. And this is going to really ramp up over the next several hours. And as I said, you think about all these different interstates. Here's 65 through here. And you have Montgomery up here, Birmingham. Uh, all of this area is going to be impacted as it gets dark tonight. <sighs> we got to be ready, all right? So listen, we are going to be doing something, hopefully, keep your fingers crossed, really amazing, even if it's at dark. I talked about this before. We want to launch this payload here. It is a uh, Pelican case. It has two GoPros. There's one there and another. Let's get a different color, uh, yellow. Got a GoPro here. There's a GoPro hidden over here. You can't see it. There's a little temperature hum humidity pressure probe right there. And then this is the antenna for the APRS, Amateur Radio Transmitter, and all of that sits inside of here, this little computer. I forgot to pull up that picture, but that's fine. Uh, this is about the size of a little bit larger than a lunchbox. It weighs under five pounds, and it is lifted into the atmosphere through a giant weather balloon, 1,500 gram weather balloon. There's the parachute right there. There's yours truly, and there's our good friend and partner, Carrie, who has helped with this over the years. This is from a test that we did in uh, Texas a couple of years ago. The idea is to launch this in the eye of a hurricane. So we wait in our truck, wherever, right? There's my truck, there's Carrie's truck, and the hurricane comes right over us. And when that eye comes over us, uh, too bad I can't animate this in real time, we're positioned here, and we let that weather balloon go, and it spirals up or does whatever. We really don't know. We've talked to a lot of people about what it might do. The larger the eye, the better, in my opinion. And then it gets clear of the hurricane and should go up all the way to 100,000 feet, roughly. And then the low pressure up there causes the balloon to burst. And then it falls back to Earth, the payload does, through that parachute right there that gets deployed and slows the descent rate considerably. And we track it using APRS, Amateur Radio Beacon, and satellite tracking using a spot locator. The beauty of this, twofold, we can collect this weather data and it transmits live pressure, humidity, temperature through this little transmitter. I will post the link, assuming we get to launch it, uh, and you can follow along live. You'll also know where it is in relation, sort of like ground tracking, uh, if it was on the ground, where it would be. And when it bursts, you'll see it falling, etc. through the data. We cannot watch the cameras live 
maybe one day if someone steps up and helps to sponsor what we're doing with a, a big check, maybe we can do it live one day. But since it's going to be dark, we might not see much, and that's okay. We want to see if this works, first and foremost. Maybe we get it in the air right at sunset, and we see an incredible shot looking down on top of Nate from way up high, 100,000 feet. One camera looks kind of down and out. The other camera looks basically straight up towards the balloon. It's always neat to see that burst. So we're hoping to do that sometime within the next three hours. I'm nervous about it. i got to tell you, we've been trying to do this for five years, and this will be the first opportunity to do so. Uh, if you want to help out, uh, this costs a lot of money to do this. Uh, become a long-term supporter, a patron at Patreon, or you can send a PayPal contribution as well, and it helps to put gas in the tank, food in our bellies, and buy equipment and stuff like that. And you know what? You guys have been a big help, and I appreciate it very much. We also have, of course, our app. It's called Hurricane Impact, and I've been talking about this, and it's active right now. Lots of good stuff feeding into it on the App Store, on Google Play, Two words, Hurricane Impact, the live weather data going in from the Biloxi Bay weather station that we set up, plus the four camera systems, everything's running in the app, and uh, go on there and help support what we do. And, hey, you get something in return that's not just a gimmick. Um, you know what I mean? It gives you something that's really unique and different. All right, well, this is the end of the video discussions until tomorrow. From here on out, I'm focusing on launching that weather balloon. Wish us luck. We're going to need it. Once we launch it, then we see if it clears the hurricane, and if so, oh my goodness, then it bursts, it falls, and we have to go get it. That could take a few weeks or a few months or a few hours. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. One last thing. To follow everything we're doing from here on out today, be sure to follow at Hurricane Track on Twitter. I will post snippets, updates, quick blurbs, you name it, the link to track the balloon, all on Twitter between now and the rest of the landfall here. Thank you all very much for your time and attention. I appreciate it. We have a very successful field mission underway so far. And with any amount of, uh, any amount of luck and the preparedness that we've done to get ready will hopefully favor that luck, we'll have a successful end to this mission with the launch of the Hurricane Research Balloon payload. That, to me, would be simply remarkable. Have a great rest of your evening. Thanks for watching. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. It's not evening yet. It's afternoon, but nevertheless, have a good one, and I will talk to you again tomorrow.